Bristol Community FM 93.2. Your voice, your choice. And now back to the interview we started last week with Bridget and Simon from Bristol Underground Church. Now you do quite a lot of the street evangelism. Yeah. Tell us how you got into that. Basically, I, I I prayed to Jesus one time. I was I was evangelising on the side, but I was looking for a, my what my career would be because I got a degree from Cambridge. And I suddenly said to Jesus as I was um, driving along one day, I said, "All right, I'll do it full time." And I got peace from heaven in my heart, and I knew he was saying, "Yes, that's what I want you to do." And I've been doing it ever since. And that. But was what does it actually mean, though? What are you doing day to day? To day yeah. Um, well, he said, "Do it with tracts or without." And basically, I give out thousands of leaflets. It's a lot easier than talking to everyone as they go by. But when you say Jesus said this to me, I mean, mm. how does he say it to you? I mean, well, as I said, I got peace from heaven in my heart. And I knew, I knew he was saying, yeah, that's what... He, he speaks by the Holy Spirit. Tell us, what, what is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit's the third person of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and how does it actually... Does it, can you hear a voice in your ear? Occasionally people have, but no, I haven't. It, it's, uh, he speaks spirit to spirit in your, inside, in your heart. So it's sort of almost moving you in a particular direction, to almost like pricking your conscience or something like it that. It can work that way, yes. It can, it can actually be words, but yes, it certainly can be a movement I as think well. if you're hearing voices in your head, that no, might not necessarily be Jesus, no, that, might no, it? No, no, that wasn't a voice. That, that was more like what you would say, a moving and a knowing and an understanding. It was, as I said, spirit to spirit, and that was, that was silent. As I said, I got a, a peace from heaven. What do you make of all this Holy Spirit stuff, Bridget? Well, it's a guidance which, if you listen to the small, still voice within you, guides mm. you, you know, go this way. Um, did you remember to lock the car tonight? It could get stolen. You got the next But day, I mean, that's gone. surely that's your own <laughs> mind saying that, no, isn't it? No, it, it's definitely a guidance uh, from heaven. Can and mm. you get led to help certain people. Like you might be out in the street and suddenly you're, you're told to go and help that person. And so it's a guidance. Well, it sounds like almost an instruction. It's like yes. your, your boss. God is your boss. Yes. Yes. Go yes. this way, go that way. That's right. Yeah. And how, how do you tune into that, Bob? For people who, who think this is a bit crazy, how do you tune into that? Read the Bible. Yeah. Get to know God's word. And be in tune with heaven. Just just tune in like you do to a good radio like this one. <laughs> tune what I, what in. I was, You're buttering me up. <laughs> yes. what, what, I've, what I've learned, if people are interested, is because um, I've been a Christian 25 years, I started off reading the Bible and obeying that. Um, because like when you're a babe, say you're you know in the flesh, you, you need your, your parents around to tell you what to do. And when I graduated a bit more in Christ, I felt that he was saying... Don't depart from the Bible, but listen to the Spirit. Now, he gave me a word. The Word and the Spirit say Amen, so they agree. Mm -hmm. But So when you grow up as a child, you, 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 you gradually start to think for yourself, say, and, and, not, and not remember everything, your pet, not do everything just because your parents said something. So for a young Christian, get into that Bible, as Bridget said, mm -hmm. and as you grow... You will. God will speak to you directly, not to contra contravene the Bible, but you you will grow in your personal relationship and learn to receive directly as well. Yeah, you're nodding away there, Bridget. But I mean, we've had also mm. on this program Gail yes. Ripplinger. Um, she's an American. She wrote a book called the New Age Bible Version. So the actual version of the Bible you use is quite important. She's yes. pointed out that the New International Version of the Bible, which is a copywriter, which is still owned by Rupert Murdoch and his. Uh, yeah media empire i imagine it's harper collins the publishing arm of the murdoch empire yeah. uh, quite a lot is actually missing from that things like oh, yeah. fasting things like yeah. Yeah. actually the words uh, the name of god the name of jesus things like that are kind of missing in some cases in time verses missing from which yeah. so it's quite important you have the right version we, of the go Bible. For, we go for the king james yes yeah what what i say is the king the king james for accuracy yes. and other supplement other translations for understanding because quite often the king james is a bit archaic and as long as you don't depart from from the king james the others can add understanding where where it can, where the other is difficult yeah because it's very important to get the fast and prayer like you just said tony in because yeah. half is just prayer the other half is fast and prayer jesus said mm. 
some things will only come leave. out by fast and prayer. Yeah, so yeah. it's very important. That's why they've taken out the. Why is that so important? I and mean, Murdoch's taken this out of the Bible. It, what? What? Why are prayer and fasting important? It's because it leaves things less effective in the Bible if you don't have the whole truth. Because if Jesus said fast and prayer, he meant fast and prayer so that certain things would leave people and they'd be healed and perhaps delivered from demonic well, things. Well, Jesus said it doesn't come out just by prayer. It yes. needs fasting as well. Yeah, yeah it's such a... It's a shame now, that's happened. Christianity isn't the only religion in the city. I mean, we probably have all sorts of other slightly spooky ones, which we may not go there right now. But what about the Islam? Because I, I've spoken to some Muslims that say when Jesus comes back, they agree with Christians, mm. saying that when Jesus comes back, he's going to come back as a Muslim. Well, I think, well, why is he called Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christian, not Jesus Muslim. Yeah. And he's also a Jew and not any other religion. He wasn't a Catholic or a Protestant or a, a whatever else, a Muslim. He was a... Quaker. He was a Jew, and he'll remain that, come back as that. Okay, well, lovely to talk to you both. Uh, just remind us, because I know you do prayer meetings in your own flat, don't you, Simon? Yeah. How can people uh, hook up with you? Rather than, we've had email and things like that, what about uh, face-to-face? You've had my phone number. Yeah, well, as I say, my phone number, and it's um, Wednesdays, 7.30. And they're really good meetings, by the way. It's more than prayer, it's, um, it's fellowship and Bible study and everything. It's okay. free, it's and absolutely freedom. And uh, just to remind, the uh, email address is Bristol Underground Church at yahoo.co.uk. Simon's number 07984727051. Simon and Bridget, thanks very much for thanks, joining us. Tony. Yeah, thanks, Thank Tony. You. God bless. You're listening to dialectradio.co.uk. UK, 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 UK.